Hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. This season, we're talking about prayers, and this time we'll discuss some prayers that are relatively recent, no more than a century old as I say this. In the spring and summer of 1916, three young children had visions of an angel in the village of Fatima, Portugal, who taught them prayers to pray, among other things. On May 13, 1917, these were followed by visions of the Blessed Mother, who the children didn't recognize at first. After many prophecies and warnings, which have clearly been borne out by history since then, a miracle occurred on October 13, 1917, in which the sun was seen to move through the sky in an irregular pattern, changing colors and rotating like a wheel. Several healings took place at the same time, and the phenomenon was visible up to 24.8 miles away. The numbers of people present at the event exceeded 30,000, and actual witnesses numbered over 100,000. In fact, the secular newspaper reports of the time reported on it quickly, saying, in essence, this really happened, but we hope nobody will take it in a religious context. Someday I might do a whole episode just on the evidence for the miracle of the sun, but suffice to say, it was overwhelming. Naturalistic explanations have been proposed, all of which involve believing coincidences more improbable than a divine miracle, and all of which were proposed long after the event had occurred, and usually in another country. The Vatican recognized the strength of the evidence, and was forced to admit that the Fatima miracle and prophecies were worthy of belief by the faithful. I'll be going over two prayers today, both acquired through the visions at Fatima, and like the Hail Holy Queen, both are also often used in conjunction with the Rosary. Here's the first prayer. O oh my Jesus, forgive us our sins. We plead for Jesus to forgive our sins, implying that he is God, since, as he himself said, only God can forgive sins. Save us from the fires of hell, and lead all souls to heaven. We ask to be saved from falling into hell, so that we can be with God in heaven one day. The part about lead all souls into heaven once confused me, since we know it to be an unreasonable request to ask God to bring everyone to heaven. However, God does attempt to lead all souls to heaven, because he doesn't want anyone to perish. When souls reject him and choose hell, it's because they've rejected the leadership of Jesus, which would otherwise have led them into heaven. Just because God leads people to heaven, it doesn't mean that they'll follow his lead. Especially those in most need of your mercy. When people need the mercy of God most, we ask that God provide them with it, giving them a special chance to be saved. However, again, this is not contrary to the belief that people go to hell, since some choose to reject the mercy of God. Now the second of the prayers from Fatima. My God, I believe, I adore, I hope, and I love you. A good start. We believe in God. We treat him with adoration, which in the language of the church means worship reserved for God alone. We hope in God because only God can make us truly and permanently happy and fulfilled. And we should treat God with what the prayer calls love, which I refer to as charity. This means the willingness to sacrifice for another. So we should be willing to make sacrifices in order to do the will of God. I beg pardon of you for those who do not believe, do not adore, do not hope, and do not love you. The second part of the prayer is a plea for people who don't have this same disposition towards God yet. We ask him that he will pardon them, meaning forgive them, and give them another chance. In specific, we seem to be asking that God will extend more graces to these people so that they can use the graces to turn away from their evil doing. Next time, a prayer about Mary and the many things that she is. That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.